Hi, my name is Shamik Raja and I'm the CEO and founder of Golpesa. And today we are here to talk about the PON. For those of you who don't know what the PON is, the PON is a algorithm developed by Triomnia Capital, which Golpesa utilizes in order to create a very unique, tokenized, value-generating, gold-backed structure product for Golpesa customers. And today we will talk about the theories behind the pond, and one of the main theories behind the pond is to understand cycles. Cycles exist everywhere we are in the world. Um, there are 100-year cycles, there are 10-year cycles, there are 30-year commodity cycles, there are 40-year real estate cycles, um, and even in small micro terms, there are also small, small cycles that occur. Um, and these cycles can also be called waves or sine waves, or cosine waves. Um, and often when we're talking about the markets or developing an algorithm in order to model the markets, um, often people will look at the market and say, well, this is random, right? It, it looks like just a bunch of noise. Um, and to the human eye, it, it often does look like a bunch of noise. Um, but if you look at that analogy and you, and you think about uh, making a sound in an oscilloscope, uh, our voice is also just a noise. Um, and in recent, years, the development of voice recognition software, something everybody knows about, um, is a, quite an everyday activity for us. Uh, and when you, when you look at, when you speak to Siri, Siri somehow knows what you've said, even though your voice comes across as a very analog, noisy signal to the human eye. Um, and what happens is that Siri effectively takes your voice, so let's say that, let's say that you, you make a sound, or you, you're speaking to Siri, then what will end up happening is there'll be some kind of noise like so, which is, which is fed as an input to Siri. Siri then chops up your sound in small, small samples. Siri then takes the Fourier transform or the dominant cycle in each of these samples and often you will get a dominant frequency that exists in your voice when you're saying certain words. So in this first sample, it might be 60 hertz, then it might be 20 hertz, then it might be 10 hertz, might be 5, 60, and so on and so forth. And what you're creating is a digital signature that represents your sound. And this is how voice recognition software works in the most basic way that I can explain it. Um, and so to the human eye, this looks like a bunch of noise. But using mathematics, we're able to break down that, that sound into smaller samples. We're able to then take the, from the time domain and, and, and transfer the data into the frequency domain. So for that specific signal, we're able to tell the spectrum of frequencies and especially the dominant frequencies that exist in that sample. Um, and if we are aware of those dominant frequencies, um, then it gives us a digital fingerprint or signature for that noise. Um, and, and that helps Siri quantify what we have said. So similarly, if we're looking at the markets, you know, it may look like just noise, but we believe that there are dominant cycles within that noise which can be quantified and utilized in order to give us just a slight edge in predicting what could happen next. Um, and make trade decisions based on that theory. Um, and you know, a good analogy to kind of explain what is happening in the world and in the markets. Um, let's, say, let's say that we're a trader and we are, we're here in London. Let's say there's a big pond, right? This is a pond. And let's say this is London, right? The pond represents the earth. Let's say here this is London. And let's say over here is Singapore. And let's say over here is USA. Now me as a trader, we're sitting here in London and what happens is the markets are a reaction to constantly different data, events, risk events, uh, 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 announcements from the presidents, 
um, and all kinds of various information which is popping up throughout the day, even 24 hours a day, um, especially in the FX markets. And when this news comes out, it creates almost like a ripple. Uh, and depending on the strength of the news, that ripple uh, is either greater in amplitude or, or lesser, lesser in amplitude. So for example, in the US, uh, every time um, Elon Musk uh, starts talking about Dogecoin or, or one of these tokens, you end up getting a very strong reaction. And the amplitude of that reaction is stronger. Now maybe at the same time in Singapore, they're talking about you know, the CPI or the consumer price index, in which case it's a bit smaller reaction. And so you get almost like dropping a, a stone into this quiet lake. And what happens is, once that news comes out, um, you get a collective cycle that exists based on fear and greed of how we perceive that news. Um, and as a, collective, uh, as a collective group of traders, you are effectively going to create this fear and greed cycle, which is, starts at the amplitude of the noise, or, and it slowly has a dampering effect by the time it reaches to you in London, right? And similarly, in Singapore, a smaller noise would then also traverse down and reach you at a different time with a, at a different phase. So here you're sitting in London and you're getting different events and different news throughout the world. You have traders and the markets reacting to that news and they're reacting in a slight cyclical nature due to fear and greed of human nature. And all of that is basically aggregating together in this one spot, which gives you a completely mashup of all the different waves and different amplitudes, depending on the initial amplitude and depending on the damping factor of that news and how, how important it was in, in the world. So if we look at this theory, you could, you could say that in the markets, similarly, let's say we have a market uh, that looked similar to a, a sine wave, right? This is the high, this is the low. Now, within this sine wave, which is probably the sine wave or the noise caused by Elon Musk, you also have the smaller sine wave, which is being created by the CPI index in Singapore from the previous uh, analogy. So here, sitting in London, we're looking at this standing wave of the markets that are reacting as an aggregate of all of this news. So what you end up happening is you might have the smaller sine wave encompass the larger sine wave, right? And what you end up, what you really have here is you have two different sine waves smashed together to create one signal, which to us, if we didn't know that, in a very simple terms, this would look like noise. So, if we know that we have these two sine waves, right, then we know that in this case, it's a very clear sine wave with no noise. Um, which means that if we were to per perform a simple Fourier transform, uh, we would be able to extrapolate the dominant frequency in this waveform for this given moment in time. So let's say this waveform is comprises of that, and it also comprises of the Singapore news. So here, we've got something like 100 hertz, and here we might have something like 30 hertz, which is the frequency of the sine wave. And if we know the frequency of the sine wave, we know the period as well, because we know the period equals 1 over the frequency, right? Um, and let's say, for example, we know that the period is, say, 20 bars, right? So we know that from here to here, this waveform is moving 20 bars from peak to trough, right? And we know that here, this waveform from peak to trough might be only, say, 5 bars in the market. So if we're looking at this waveform here, and we make a buy order here at the bottom, we know that halfway up the sine wave, which is 10 bars, we're going to reach the top, right? Um, if this sine wave continues uh, as expected. Um, and now, we don't necessarily want to just get it at the top. We might want to take into consideration this other small wave here, right? So if we, if we, instead of here, let's talk about here. Um, we may want to look at the small sine wave, 
in order to get in at the top of that sine wave or at the bottom of that sine wave to give, give us the most optimal entry point. Um, this is not how the pond works, <laughs> but this gives you one possible way of how you can use digital signal processing, which is exactly what I've described here, is to take an analog signal, uh, break it down into a spectrum of, of um, a spectrum of, of frequencies or sine waves at different frequencies which make up this signal. Um, and that gives us a bit of information that we can utilize um, assuming that that signal is going to carry on in some fashion. Um, and so this is one of the easiest ways for me to explain to a beginner or a novice as to how digital signal processing uh, can be used in the, in the market, similar to how Siri uses it for voice recognition. Now, there's many issues with using the Fourier transform uh, in the markets. Uh, the biggest issue is that in order for the Fourier transform to work uh, as well as it should, your wave must be stationary for at least one full cycle. Um, and that's, uh, in the daily and four hour time frames, that's a tall order because the market is moving much more quickly um, and, and to expect a dominant cycle to exist for that long a period of time uh, is a very, very tall order. So that's just a little bit of advice uh, if it's something that uh, interests you. So that basically explains um, digital signal processing and how it applies to the markets. Uh, and it explains a little bit of the theories that encompass behind the actual pawn. Now, when we talk about the pawn, the pawn is, is, is really a, is a, is a proprietary group of indicators. Um, and how we interpret those indicators, we leave up to the neural nets. And we th it's not the neural nets here. The neural nets are, old, are a small aspect to this, right? Developing an input into those nets is much, much more important. And so we have developed uh, certain inputs with the, with the thought process that there is some predictive power to having that information inputted into a neural net. Um, so you can't just go and throw a whole bunch of uh, various indicators and signals uh, without some kind of theory as to why those signals are working. Um, and this is something that is uh, the most easiest and simplest way for me to explain cycle analysis and, and digital signal processing. Uh, that is the main research that we do at Triomia, and that is what in, is behind uh, the pond.